Okay, let's just start our Java course with talking about why we've chosen Java as a language to study here at Norwood. There are a few reasons. Basically, it's got a structure that you can apply to pretty much any language that you choose to use in the future. And we're talking about the, the languages that are used right through the software development industry, not some something very simple for education. We've tried that and now it's time to move you out a little bit. The other reason we chose Java is it'll run on pretty much any device you can think of. And this is a really big um, a big draw card for Java. You'll have all seen this before. Three million, three billion devices run Java. You can see there it talks about things including phones, Blackberries, routers, Kindles, parking meters, public transport um, kiosks, all sorts of things. And basically all of these particular platforms here you can write one set of code and it can run on pretty much any of those machines. But let's have a look at how. And while these two documents look a little bit hard to understand, about 90 seconds from now and after about three repetitions hopefully you'll have a good understanding of how you can write one program but have it run on any one of a number of different kinds of machine. Basically you have to sit down and write some source code. It's just text. It's like typing a letter. You'll usually do this in a program called an integrated development environment, like the one we use here at Norwood is Eclipse. Uh, it's also fairly commonly used throughout industry. It's not the only development environment around, but it's a, a fairly popular one and it's totally free. So instead of using a word processor to type your code, although you could, you will type your code in Eclipse. You'll then compile this into something that's not text anymore, but it's a machine language file that the computer can understand. That file gets run through the Java Virtual Machine on any computer that's running um, Java, which is all the major platforms. And the Java Virtual Machine will translate that um, bytecode you created for whatever particular operating system it's loaded on. So just as the last and final time to make this happen, the JVM is what you get when you install Java on your machine. Whenever you install Java, you're actually installing a little layer of software that's specially designed to communicate between people's Java bytecode and the operating system underneath. So what you'll do is type up your source code. You'll then compile that into bytecode. You can't look at bytecode in a text editor. That bytecode will then run on a Java virtual machine and that Java virtual machine software will run on just about any device and suddenly your source code can be run on pretty much any device. So what do we need to get started? You are going to need something to do your typing in and it'd be nice if you had a, an environment to do your typing in that highlighted errors for you, um, compiled your software let you try it out, gave you hints, accessed all of the Java libraries, that'd be very good. So we're going to use a um, piece of software called Eclipse, which is the integrated development environment of our choice. Its job is to organise all your files together because every Java project has more than one file that interact with each other to make your program work. It needs to be somewhere that allows you to type your code and perhaps highlight those errors. It should compile your program, provide an area for you to see it running and its job is to interact with the Java Software Development Kit because Java really consists of thousands of programs that interact with each other. Some of them are standardised that you'll learn in the course and of course some you'll write yourself. And that's all we need to get started. So let's have a look at Eclipse in action. Okay, in this video we're just going to do our very first ever Java program. So I have an empty Eclipse set of windows here and we need to create a new project so that we can come over here and write our code and when we run our code we'll be able to see the results of it down here in the console. So let's make a start by building ourselves a, an empty project. I'm going to say File, New, Java Project. Up comes a window wanting us to give it a name. The purpose of our first program is to see if all that effort that we put into installing Eclipse on our computer has actually paid off in that Eclipse is going to work. We just want to see that the computer can compile a program and give us some output, show that it can actually work. So we're going to make the computer say hello to us and the standard computer um, learning, language learning program that everybody writes when they learn a new language makes the computer say hello world to them as if it's just been born. So we'll call this project hello world. 
I'm going to leave everything else as it is and click finish and that will create for us a new project and the project is simply a set of folders that get created on our on our computer system for us um, that keep all of our bits and bobs together just as we want so all of our files that relate to making things work for this project will live in the hello world folder well now it's time to create a so a, a, a source code file we need to create a new class now you might remember that classes in Java are what I've asked you to consider as programs the reality is that classes fit together like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle to create super programs but just for now we're going to create one jigsaw puzzle piece one class and in that class we're going to have one block of code so here we go in our project we need to create a new class so I'll go file new class up pops this window. For now I'm leaving packages out of it, um, but more on that in a later video. The name that I'm going to give my class will match the name here, Hello World. But you'll notice one little difference, there's no space this time, and you must always start a class name with a capital. So we can say finish now, and suddenly I have a Hello World Java file. It even um, starts it off for me. All of our programs will start with public class and then the name of it. We'll then open our curly brackets. All programs will end with a curly bracket and in between, well, this is where all the blocks of code that we want to run are going to be written. We're only going to write one block of code and each block of code, by the way, is called a method. So I'm going to write a method. Now Whenever you launch a Java program, it has to pick one of these blocks of code to run first, and the block that it runs first is called main. So I'm now going to create a main method, and this is the code that you'll type in pretty much every Java program you write. Public, static, void, main is the name of the method, not mail, <laughs> main. Then we're going to open some curly brackets and type string with a capital S couple of square brackets and then the word args. After all of that we're going to open a new curly bracket, drop down a little bit because every curly bracket has a pair, we'll do a close one as well. So everything between here and here is going to be the block of code that's going to run when this class starts up. So when this program starts up it'll go to the block of code called main and run any stuff that's in there. Now what we want our program to do now is to output some text to the computer screen. We want to we want Java to say hello I'm working. To do that we're going to use some stuff built into Java called system out and I want you to think of system out as meaning anything on the screen. So I'm going to say system dot out and what do I want it to do? Nicely enough, Eclipse is actually every time I'm typing a dot showing me options of what I could type. I want to actually print some writing and then end with a line feed so it goes to a new line. So I want to print a line and that will be in here somewhere. Long print line, where are you? It's just print ln. There it is, here. If I double click that. In it comes and our line of code will print to the computer screen something and at the end of it it will drop to a new line and it's nice enough that when you hover over things in Eclipse like this, come back in, it will describe what's going on. So it'll terminate the current line by writing a new, or going to a new line. All good. Well what do we want it to print? That's what's got to go into these brackets. Everything I want to print exactly goes in double quotes. So I will type the double quotes, hello world, exclamation mark. So now when the computer program runs, it will come to the main method here and it will then execute all the code, which is one line that says print out this. All right, now the fun starts. Our whole program is written and as you've seen, we've got the area that manages all of our software, the area where we write our code and down here there is a console and this is um, a leftover from a previous thing that I did. Let's now run our program by using the run button up here. There's also 
a way to run it as, as other options, but we're not using those at the moment. So when we run it, down in the console, out comes the text that we asked for. If I alter the text, help if I could spell, and rerun the program, we get the new set of text out. Finally, we want to save our file, so I'll go up to File, Save As, and OK. And we can see it's saving it with the name Hello Java. Well, there you go, your first Java program. What will happen is we will keep adding different projects for the different pro uh, things we do in class, and you'll build up a big skill set. Thanks.